Erev Tov Chavrim, I'm Stephen Benun. You're watching Israeli News Live. As we all know, yesterday that uh, Russia, uh, Foreign Minister uh, Sergei Lavrov, as along with John Kerry, uh, with the United States Secretary of State there, have been working uh, the second time around to, to bring about a ceasefire in Syria. That is a ceasefire between President Bashar al-Assad, uh, the Syria, uh, his Syrian forces who have been battling the rebels who have been trying to topple him from power that are backed by the United States. Uh, of course, the ceasefire has been uh, received somewhat optimistically by President Vladimir Putin of Russia, but yet somewhat not so optimistic by the United States. I want to kind of show you the differences between the two there. Uh, right here we have uh, President Putin. This is on TASS Russian News. His comments are very interesting. Uh, it says here in the opening article here, President of the United States and Russia, Vladimir Putin uh, and Barack Obama, I have reached an agreement on the cessation of hostilities in Syria, which is due to come into force at midnight on February 27th, that's this coming weekend, after all the parties uh, uh, to the conflict will sign up to it, Putin said in a statement placed on the Kremlin website. He says, I have just had a telephone conversation with U.S. President Barack Obama, uh, Putin said. The Russian side initiated the talk. But the interest was mutual without doubt. Now you're going to see in just a moment, the United States makes it look like Russia is just running over here to beg for us to uh, do a cessation and to agree to something. But President Putin seems to be a little bit more optimistic about that and kind of hoping the United States would be the same and not wanting to further the escalation of this violence here. Uh, during the talk, we approved the joint statements of Russia and the United States as the co-chairs of the International Syrian Support Group of the cessation of hostilities in that country. Putin says, I am convinced that joint efforts agreed with the U.S. to ensure the cessation of hostilities are capable of turning the tide most radical in settlement of the Syrian cri uh, Syria crisis, Putin said. At last, there appeared a real chance to stop the long-standing bloodshed and violence he said, adding that it would create conditions for the, for the launch of a real political process. You know, if I'm not mistaken, it's like nearly a half million people have died in this violence already. And in the million, I think it's nine million have been wounded. It is an unbelievable uh, war, to say the least there. But as I mentioned to you, though, it's not going so good as far as in the United States. John Ernest uh, who's also on the bottom of your screen here. We'll listen to him in just a moment here. Uh, he doesn't quite to seem so optimistic about that. He says, for the second time this month, the U.S. and Russia are attempting to broker a ceasefire into Syria, or inside Syria. In a joint statement released today, the two countries announced their agreement for cessation of hostilities beginning this Saturday. President Barack Obama, Rus Russian President Vladimir Putin, spoke by phone uh, today to talk about the plan. The White House said... In that call, President Obama said the focus now shifts to making sure the Syrian regime and the armed opposition and all other parties respond in a positive manner, according to the statement from Press Secretary John Ernest. That's kind of interesting. They always kind of put it on the Syrian regime first there. Listen to what John, uh, uh, excuse me, what Josh Ernest has to say a little bit about Play, this. Uh, that nation that has uh, broken apart. Uh, but this is a moment of opportunity. And it is the result of tenacious diplomacy on the part of Secretary Kerry. And we, we are got, going we to continue to try to capitalize uh, on this moment of opportunity. And we are hopeful that all of the other signatories to the document uh, will do the same thing. Uh, and uh, we'll proceed from there. It is unbelievable in my opinion here, that he responded the way that he did here. Uh, I mean, just really, really ridiculous. Uh, it, it, it quickly makes it look like the United States is always the good guy, and there's nothing bad that we're doing here, but yet it's the United States that openly is supporting the, uh, the armed rebel resistance against President Bashar al-Assad. They want to overthrow the man, and yet they have lied about him, said that he gassed his people when he did not gas his people. Now, the evidence is there that proves that Turkey did it, but do you think the United States is going to ever back away from supporting 
uh, Erdogan, who has nothing but become a, a genocide thug. I mean, if you want to talk about a, a man that is in there that is just murdering his own people, look at what Turkey is doing now. The evidence is there. They are murdering the Kurdish people in their own country, calling them terrorists. And, uh, and of course, now we see that supposedly the, uh, the, the, the Kurds have claimed responsibility for the bombing in Ankara that killed uh, uh, quite a large number of soldiers there. They're saying they're doing it in retaliation for what the Turks are doing to their own people in the southern part of the country there. But, you know, the Kurds were not the problem to start with. The Kurds have been fighting ISIS, but that's where Turkey has an issue. They're slowing down the oil operation that Erdogan has been made very wealthy from by selling this illegal oil to different nations around the world, including some European nations as well. So it's, it is a big problem for them. Now, also another interesting thing too as well, the Wall Street Journal uh, made a very interesting point uh, uh, article here. It says the Pentagon CIA chiefs don't think Russia will abide by Syria's ceasefire. Well, what do you know? It, it, it's just amazing. I mean, I, I realize, friends, there's evil on both sides. I don't say that President Putin is some knight in shining armor. By no means there's just as much evil on both sides, but I have really watched and seen uh, to, to, to utter dismay what the Obama administration has been doing all along. I mean, this man has got nothing but a bunch of thugs working for him as well. Anyway, it says in here, uh, President Barack Obama's top military and intelligence advisors don't believe Russia will abide by a just announced ceasefire in Syria and want to ready plans to increase pressure on Moscow by expanding uh, covert support to rebels fighting the Russian-backed Assad regime. Uh, Defense Secretary Ash Carter uh, Marine General Joseph Dunford, Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff and Gen uh, Central Intelligence Agency, Agency Director John Brennan have voiced increasingly hawkish views toward Moscow in re uh, recent White House meetings calling for new measures to inflict real pain on the Russians, a senior administration official said. Do you think Russia doesn't listen to all these things? I mean, are we really awake in America? Do we not realize you keep beating this man and this people long enough, they're going to retaliate. Right now, the Middle East, just one thing. I mean, do we feel like that in America that, the, that we have some great superiority or, or, you know, I mean, do we not realize that, that there, there, is, there is a God in heaven that's looking down and watching the evils and the corruption that goes on from the White House as well? And in fact, the one thing that Putin did do is he goes in there and, and tries to rescue the, uh, the professing Christian people that are in there that are being slaughtered by ISIS while the United States has just let them all die. In fact, when there were Iraqi uh, Christians that came to the United States to, for, for, for religious uh, asylum, they were all sent back. But you kept all the ones that were, were radicals. Same thing happening in, in Europe as well with the refugee crisis here. The, 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 the religious ones that believe in Yeshua are sent back. While the ones that there is, uh, could be problems with are kept here and welcome with open arms. And I don't say that there's not a lot of refugees that are suffering, sure enough, because they've been uprooted by this war. But remember, and now it's all being blamed on Russia because Russia's in there slowing down their oil uh, trade that they were making so many billions of dollars off of by getting it cheap and still selling at higher prices. Yeah, they were making billions of dollars off of that. But, you know, it's all getting interrupted by Russia coming in there and changing the whole tide of things. And again, like I said before, I know that Russia's there to protect their own interests. Putin has said he's there to protect his own national interests. His country did sign a deal with President Bashar al-Assad, and so it's important that he stays in power. But there again, President Putin has also got a good point. He said the man is the president of the country, and he is the one that was put in there into power. So why are they trying to just overthrow him and just think that they can do it? It's really, it's really just become a quagmire of a mess there, to say the very least. Anyway, I'm Stephen Benu. You're watching Israeli News Live. We've got some interesting things coming up here in the next couple of days for you. Hope to get things together. Been working on it, but just have not pulled it all together as of yet. But anyway, God bless you. Thank you for watching. And we hope to be talking to you again soon.